today on the CTV News at 5. A serious crash at a notorious Colhurst intersection. Plus, how Southern Albertans are celebrating Heritage Day. And it's Decision Day. Tonight, the Bulls take on the Dogs. The winner takes the five-game series. CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Alberta's most dangerous long weekend on the highways is wrapping up with an accident at an infamous intersection. Traffic slowed to a crawl on Highway 3 outside of Colehurst early this afternoon following a collision that sent two people to hospital. According to RCMP, this motorcycle was traveling westbound on Highway 3 when it collided with a Toyota SUV that was exiting Colehurst and crossing over the westbound lanes in an attempt to turn east. Both vehicles had one person inside them. Both were taken to the hospital. No update is available as of yet on the condition of the drivers. Whenever you have a lot of vehicles on the road, you have a lot more driving complaints, speed, erratic driving, impaired driving, that types of things. So um, whenever you have more people in an area, at a certain area uh, in specific, you're going to have more issues uh, to deal with. So every long weekend, unfortunately, we see a lot of collisions, uh, a lot of these types of things, unfortunately. Now, the accident is under investigation to see if speed or alcohol were factors. Thousands of people are still on the highways tonight, making their way home after the long weekend. In the past 10 years, nearly 100 people have died on Alberta highways during the August long weekend. Thousand more have been injured. Extra sheriffs were put on the road for the next for the past few days as police beefed up their presence. Just be uh, doing safe speeds. There's a lot of traffic out there, including motorcycles, semis, uh, SUVs, trucks. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, fifth wheels and recreational vehicles being pulled. So visibility is an issue when you have that many vehicles that are that big. So just uh, make sure you have a safe distance between you and the other vehicles around you and that you're aware of your surroundings. We've given Dory Rossiter the day off. We've got Steve Rothfels filling in. Now, Steve, a day full of thunderstorm watches and warnings across southern Alberta. Are things going to settle down a little bit more tonight? They will tonight, but as you pointed out, lots of showers and thunder showers around again this afternoon. Lethbridge still under a severe thunderstorm watch. That's the potential for a severe thunderstorm. I actually spotted a funnel cloud earlier this afternoon around Calgary, but no danger this far south. We'll have the full forecast for you coming up a little bit later in the show. Jackie. Thank you, Steve. Well, seeing as this is Heritage Day, many Southern Albertans spent the day enjoying our many different ethnicities. Hundreds of people lined up early this morning to get inside the arena at Exhibition Park. And this is what they were waiting for. The tastes and smells that represent the different ethnic groups in Lethbridge. Our own Dory Rossiter was emceeing today's event. At least 25 different nationalities were represented through dance, music and food at Lethbridge's annual Heritage Day, which has been hosted by Southern Alberta's Ethnic Association for the past 36 years. Organizers say this multicultural event is a chance for different groups to be in one place to perform together and share their food and culture. We feel that this would bring understanding among different groups. So more understanding among groups is better for the community as a whole. And that is what our goal is and that's what we hope to achieve through all this. It's for, uh, good for everyone to try for everything and it's good for like uh, to be a part of this nice town, right? It's all just like family recipes and all the families coming together and just bonding and cooking together. Now last year over 2,000 people attended the event. Well, there was no end to the amount of festivities going on this Heritage Day long weekend, and the Pikani First Nation was no exception. Brock had hosted the nation's oldest powwow competition as a way to showcase the Blackfoot culture. The powwow has been going on for the past 56 years and draws over 500 dancers and drummers from across North America who prepare all year for just this event. The competition ran Saturday and Sunday with contenders vying for cash and prizes. The celebration in Brock had also included a horse race, a rodeo and softball and golf tournaments. 
all the volunteers that came out to help, you know. It's really awesome to see, you know, all the people that are dancing, just having a great old time, you know. And that just makes me feel really good when I see that. It makes me really proud that people have come to our community, Bikani Nation, to celebrate with us. Like this year it's our 56th and it's, it's very nice to see such, you know, such a wonderful turnout. Princess pageant and hand game tournament were a few of the other events that took place this weekend. And it was also the community of Vulcan Centennial this weekend as residents reflect on the past. They're also excited for the future. Brendan Miller reports. Hundreds line Center Street in downtown Vulcan for a centennial parade filled with floats to celebrate local talent. It's a town local residents have pride calling home. It makes it home because it's safe and you know people on the street. When you go down into the stores they know you by name. So it's a very special family friendly environment. You drive up to the stop sign and everybody stops and waves to see who goes through first. Or he, or he said, I walk down the street and people say hi to you. And you don't get that in the major centers. Randy Wolf is now the third generation owner of Wolf's Hardware. His grandfather and founder, John Wolf Sr., opened the shop in 1913. My grandfather certainly survived the, the depression and, and the uh, stock market um, um, when it went down in 1928. He was actually um, going to uh, start an Essex car dealership at the time. Um, but he gave that up, decided that hardware was a good way to be, and it got him through the uh, dirty 30s. The actors stand out more so than the actual filming set. Just down well, the street, a unique museum has officially opened its doors. It's fantastic. To finally have this all for the fans out in the open is absolutely amazing. Oh, Fitting for a town known for its Spock days, it's the Trek Cetra Museum officially opened its doors this weekend. It's Canada's first and only licensed Star Trek museum. The owners have spent over eight years acquiring the collection. We are with CBS Studios, so we have one of the largest collections of, of Star Trek original costumes and props and set pieces in Canada. So it's amazing to have this here, and I can't wait for fans to actually really be up and close and personal with the real things you see in film. As visitors check out the new collection of movie memorabilia, others are simply content to be amongst their family and friends. Margaret Richardson grew up on a farm just a few miles north of Vulcan and has lived here her whole life. I don't know anything different. Margaret says the best part of celebrating the town's 100th birthday is being able to share it with her two daughters. When my kids come home, I'm pretty excited. Brendan Miller, CTV News, Vulcan. And the community of Foremost also celebrated its centennial this past weekend. A shocking story from northern New Brunswick. Two young boys are dead, killed by a snake that escaped from a reptile zoo and made its way into an upstairs apartment. The five and seven-year-old boys were strangled to death by the 15-foot snake while the boy slept. We've got more coming up later in our news on this story. Now a huge sinkhole has opened up in downtown Montreal. Construction crews were getting set up to fix a leaking water main. When the ground gave way, a backhoe went tumbling inside. The guy driving it has been taken to hospital since the street was already closed for maintenance work. Nobody else was close enough to get hurt. And boarding a train in Canada could soon take a little longer. Via Rail is considering ramping up its security by increasing baggage checks and inspections for sniffer dogs. Via is even looking at doing background checks on certain passengers. The proposals are in response to an alleged terror threat in April. Two men are facing terrorist-related charges for allegedly plotting to derail a Via passenger train traveling from New York to Ontario. Well, it's a growing tourism sector in our province that focuses on our local culinary offerings. It's called Farm to Fork Tours, and people are eating up the concept. Laura Lowe has the story. A greeting from the sheep. <laughs> Equally interested are the tourists. While they're visiting the pasture, this chef is preparing lamb tacos made from animals raised at this farm. The tourists are mostly city folk from Edmonton, Calgary, and places in between. I bought um, chef or goat cheese, 
and feta and some goat's milk. The experience is a self-guided farm to fork tour. Why don't we get people out to see what's happening on the farm? It's hosted by Taste Alberta, which is a non-profit that promotes locally produced and processed foods. On this midsummer Sunday, select Gull Lake area producers open their barns. This is the first year that we've done tours and um, I'm never really sure what people are interested in. Agricultural tourism has long been enjoyed in wine regions, but it's a new and growing concept here in Alberta. We've got three little kids, and so it's important for I think for our kids to see the connection between the between what we eat and where it's grown and who grows it, right? There's also the lure of a feast. Five chefs creating dishes using primarily local ingredients, in many cases from the producers on tour. Everyone's definitely getting more involved and definitely wants to know what the, where their food comes from. The mission? To increase consumption of local food and hope participants will request it. If they want to pester their stores for us, that would be great. For people taking part, they hope it's only a start. I think we need to do way more of these things, right? I mean, this is Alberta. This is where we grow stuff, right? Laura Lowe, CTV News. And on to the financial markets where Bay Street was closed today, but south of the border, markets were open there. Here's what happened.